Hey, what is up everyone? It's Rich. All right, I'm getting a late start to this video, but I wanted to get it up. And uh, one of my promises was uh, I was gonna showcase the fan art today that I have been getting. So if you submitted fan art and I already showed it in another um, Super Fun Sunday or another video, um, you know, uh, I will do the Blaster Kid like uh, video fanzine. Um, I just haven't had time so busy i'm telling you i need six hours more in the day but we're going to look through these fan arts and then we're going to look at a little bit of enki bilal um I, I was taking a sip of coffee i i was just feeling kind of the the urge to look at some sort of 70s european graphic novel stuff and i figured well if i'm going to look at something like that i might as well look at something sci-fi ish um, so I figured it would be kind of fun to look at it, but this is a great piece. So this is by David Knight. So here's the deal. When you guys submit your Blaster Kid fan art, do me two favors. Um, make sure that you send it to BlasterKidComic at gmail.com. Write Blaster Kid fan art in the title of your email. And then just the final thing, put your name on the file. Because I had to name almost every one of these files with your names. Because when I open it and it's just some encrypted like photo name, uh, then it's like, you know, I have to, to go to the email, find out what your name is, put it on the JPEG, just do it, do it for me. And it'll, it'll streamline this. Cause you know, like I said, it's, it's, uh, every moment of the day is precious now, but this is amazing. This is so good. Uh, I, if he said this was watercolor, it's just outstanding. Um, really, really beautiful piece. I was so impressed. This was the first one I opened too. Um, of the new batch i was like damn this is really really cool it's really neat it's fun to see it's fun to see everyone's imagination at play and that was the whole point of it you know i had mentioned that uh it's a sandbox for you to play in you know she's she can wear other clothes it's it's not that she couldn't ever change parts of her outfit so yeah this is killer man you did such a great job so thank you, David. And I will have links. I, I sort of shot everyone a note and said, send me your social media. So just it'll be there'll be a comment under the video where I pin it and I'll have everyone's uh, stuff up throughout the day. I'll keep updating it while I'm working. So uh, just come back if you want to find out where someone is. And within the next 24 hours, I'll have it up. But yeah, this is really cool. All right, so let's go to the next one. This is by Jorge Claire. This was really cool. I, I think he sent this to me originally through uh, Twitter, if I'm not mistaken. So this is awesome. It's really, really fun. It's very, very creative. I love all the detail that you put in with the bullets and all the gears and plugs and stuff like that. It's really, really neat. And it's so fun to see. The gun is cool. The whole thing. It's just really, really cool. The bullets look groovy. It's got a very almost like 3D quality to it, the way that you colored it. Or uh, like kind of did the the effects on it and it's really neat so this is Jorge Claire yeah really cool that's fun to see oh canisters and all kinds of things it's funny so do you clone some of this stuff it almost it at times it almost has a little bit of like a uh, yeah it's trippy as this looks like right off my piece it's interesting. Whatever the technique is, it's it's very cool. It looks cool. All right, let's go to the next one. See what we got. So this is Keir Covington. Keir actually had already done three pieces. This is real detailed. And this is like a fully realized piece. There's a an inked version of it too. He he had said if someone wants to color this, let him know. So I I I think he was half kidding, but I I don't know. I don't think he would probably be opposed if someone wants to give it a shot to color this. So you can you'll have contact information for him in the comment section, and if you guys want to collab on it, by all means do. He's got like a little bit of the David Finch sort of looking line work here. This is good. This is a nice solid figure. It really looks good. I like all the the gear and craziness of on the the stuff is really cool, and the decimated city is very very cool too. Yeah, it's nice, man. And Big Moon. You can never go wrong with a Big Moon. Although sometimes Rob Liefeld will push it too far. So here's his inks. It's really cool. Yeah, it's really, really neat. So this is Keir Covington. Very cool gun. All the pouches. I, the nuclear symbol thing is really cool on her too. 
texture on the knees. Yeah, this is cool. I want to run around in this world and see what else is what else is going on. What you know, like if I went into these buildings, who am I gonna meet? That's what it's about. I wanted to create a comic book experience and story that that would be an immersive world that you could sort of just really go kind of nuts in. So, uh, Kevin uh, Kearney, I, I it's funny because I had an editor years ago named Kevin Canary Canary. I kept wanting to say that. But this is really cool. You did a nice, nice job on it. Lots of nice detail. The texturing and stuff is very, very cool. And uh, it was really fun to see. This is cool. And the buildings, everything. Lots of destruction. Lots of destruction in this world. <laughs> you guys are going to trip out so hard when you see the book. There's no, there's no violence and no destruction. No, I'm just kidding. It's all that. No, it isn't. You'll see. You'll see. And don't forget, for colorists, you have three days to get your final um, submission. And if you're interested in trying out for the coloring job, so please send them in. I mean, it's a wide variety. It's It literally looks to me like it's people that maybe are just learning how to color all the way to professional colorists submitting. So it's, it's a pretty big um, talent surge of... of different ideas and different things it's been really really cool seeing it all and everybody really did actually an excellent job there's always something kick-ass on every one of the pieces so it's cool i like i like how you did the multiple multiple uh up you know like like her up here and this is really cool the figure sort of in the smoke is really neat and then this is all really cool too and again i mean it's like this is fun this is a unique thing with her her finger pointing and doing this um you know i it's like the creativity of it is really really cool this is awesome too this is all cool it looks really good really really cool i like the splatter and stuff it's interesting i'm assuming you did this on paper it's funny because it's it's like um with digital files you see like you can see the bit mapping maybe it's traditional but yeah sometimes with a scan and stuff like that you really can't um when you zoom in it doesn't tell so this is james smith james did an awesome job and let me i want to make sure that i credited the last person alan smith sorry i wanted to make sure i said your name yes this is alan smith that's why i wrote the name on the the uh file so alan smith did this one and again just make sure you guys send me um, your uh, internet details, and I'll post them in that comment below. So this is James Smith. He did a very like quiet piece. She's she's maybe in like a stasis chamber, being blaster kid kidicized. James signs his name. James Windsor Smith. <laughs> He's the new the new the new uh, the new Windsor Smith. This is cool. I like it. It looks really good. I keep telling James I want him because he always he generally will pencil and ink his stuff or do traditional. I'm I keep trying to encourage him to get some sort of a digital color station because I think he would actually do some really cool stuff with color. This is cool too. So this is Michael Mobs Mobs, um, and uh, really really cool. I like the motorcycle theme. All this is really really nice. You man, you nailed this stuff. This is tricky shit to put on her back kind of a pain in the ass i had to spend a lot of time figuring it out once i had the ideas of where stuff was gonna go um originally i had a lot of stuff on her back and and because of the um you know what drawing something or having an idea or sort of you know bashing together a bunch of like concepts like she's gonna have this on her and this and this and this and all of a sudden you go well how is she going to wear a backpack? Or how is she going to, you know what I mean? So it was interesting, but, uh, you know, she had to be redesigned multiple times to really get something that was cool looking, but then also functional and, and could carry out the mission at hand, uh, you know, and, and work. It's like, you know has to work yeah, this is really interesting i'm just, i'm sort of i got quiet because i was looking at the design of the bike and stuff like that it's cool i actually i had mentioned i had picked up a scott robertson um uh gum road was how to draw motorcycles so this is dylan 
Dylan Andrews. Dylan did a great job. This is really, really good. It's got a very, like, kind of classic... Um, it looks like a lot of the art, when I first got to Wildstorm, they had this drawer that was pinups and, and uh, source book pieces that were done sort of in advance. So, like, if... Uh, and look, Dylan's got custom artboard, too. Uh, when... Um, yeah, like if, if, you know, you came into work and you didn't have something to work on, you could, generally speaking, sort of maybe talk with an editor and say, hey, you know, do you mind if I do a pinup of wet works? And they could usually find something for it at some point. So they never really went to waste. But a lot of the art did actually look a lot like this. So you're in good company because there's nothing wrong with looking like a, a wild storm, you know, uh, like, like, the the more uh, what would you call it like a uh, intern year one year one pro sort of level there was you know you had wills and people like travis and aaron weisenfeld there that were already kind of like in hyper hyper mode <laughs> hyper quality level mode but uh for normal humans we drew more like this <laughs> this is cool too so this is chauncey blakely i think he has two let me see yeah, yes, Chauncey has two. So these are cool. It's crazy, too. I like, actually, that he threw the pen in it because it gives you a, a sense of scale. Because without the pen, I would actually maybe think that this was drawn bigger. So it's actually a pretty small little drawing. Well, that's a detail on the gun. If you if you had the gun just by itself and put space behind it, it would almost look like a spaceship. It's so detailed. Like, it could be, like, little windows and stuff like that. So it's really, really cool. The sword looks cool. All this stuff is really, really nice. It looks great. She's got pouches on her leg and nice rendering on her thigh this is all cool yeah it's really neat the glove looks great shoulder pads on point all this stuff on her back her little spinal thing and she's got a determined look on her face she's like i'm ready to blow some shit up rich let's go fire off this campaign already you piece of crap <laughs> In due time, young lady. I need my colorist first. <laughs> this is cool. Really, really good. I like this a lot. It's interesting. You have such a detailed style, and you go very, very peaceful on the face, but I actually kind of like that blend. I think it's really cool. It's fun to see. It like gives me a chance to relax and sort of look at the face as its own sort of beat in the drawing. But, you you know, you really chip up a lot of other stuff, you know what I mean? Like, there's little details everywhere, and then this is just like... There was a penciler named Robert Taranishi that worked at Wildstorm. He kind of drew a little bit like this. He had real detailed stuff. He would draw a lot of small detail, like, like little, little detail, like this kind of, like, almost when I say small detail, things like this, like the little dots and stuff like that. It was good. I don't really know what happened to him. But yeah, thank you, Chauncey. Very, very cool. And I'll have links to Chauncey stuff. So this is Victor Rodriguez, and Victor has two versions. Yeah, okay. So this is Blaster Kid running around in some debris and water. Careful, you could get electrocuted. This water art. Watch for watch for wires. Cool fist. This is all really, really good. We got some cool dramatic lighting on her face. Yeah, it's fun. It's really, really fun seeing this stuff. We got the smoke popping off. Cool gun. Solid. Those little vents on it or whatever they are. These are cool too. Yeah, it's really nice, Victor. Thank you very much. I appreciate it. That's really cool. Nice detail. Nice graphic shapes, too. It works. All right, and then let's see. Here's the colors. And see? These people weren't scared to draw her, like, exposed. It's hard to say if it looks like her. We'll see. We'll see. <laughs> I was, it, it's funny because you've heard me make little jokes about it before, but like her hairstyle, I came up with it a long, long time ago. I mean, like a long time ago. And the hairstyle at that point wasn't really that sort of like, it hadn't gone over the last years where it's turned into 
like you know diff like it's just a weird thing i've talked to people about it and s said my concerns with it so i may have a surprise up my sleeve for a few things on her that you'll see as we move along because uh, i i wanted to have some surprises so surprise <laughs> other surprises and this is Adi. Adi's great Adi, i i saw his work on um Instagram and he's fantastic. He's going to be really really an excellent excellent artist. Um this is cool. I like that you use this in the piece. Um but yeah, he's he's really good. Super creative, beautiful colors, very just creative art and uh, I mean, I I see great things in his future. So thank you so much, Adi. This is excellent. It's fun. It's a really unique take on her and I think she looks great. She looks really really cool. And uh, she would fit right in that world. It's excellent. So, yeah, you did a killer job. It looks great. So, all right, thank you guys all for the fan art. I will have links to everyone. It may take, you know, uh, 12 to 20 hours to get it up, but the magic of YouTube is that the videos, in theory, are up forever. So you can always come back and just check tomorrow, and I'll update it uh, until I have everyone's contact info in there. And if I don't get it, I'll write them another note and say, hey, send it over. So, all right, now let's look at some Inky Bilal and have a ball have a ball with inky Bilal. yeah i was looking at some of his stuff last night and uh, it was fun there's another artist that i like named das pastoris uh is more of a current uh, day artist i'm the, this Bilal book was done in the late 70s i was just curious to see it i've never seen it it looks sci-fi it looked sort of kind of interesting i was like you know that'll be fun i i like to see stuff that i've never seen before at times and James, I, I uh, didn't want to have to edit my video, so it, it's easier if I'm on the computer shooting a video to just stick on the computer. But I will do uh, some sort of open that book with the book that you sent me. So I'm going to set up a P.O. box. If people are really determined for me to actually do a specific book or you want to show me something, I will have a P.O. box that people will be able to send things to. And, and you know, I can show them on the air and go over them and stuff like that. thought it would be fun and interactive and uh, a cool extension of the thing. So, all right, let's go into full screen mode and start checking this stuff out. So, we won't hang out too long on every page because this video will get very long. But uh, let's see what we got. So, Bilal has been around for at least 40 years that I know of. So I'm assuming that he's probably an older guy now. Um, I don't, you know, it's one of those things. Like, I'm a, a big fan of Mobius, and obviously Bilal will get in some ways compared to Mobius. But I don't really know how many artists drew like this over in Europe. You know what I mean? Like, I don't, I'm not a historian of, like, 1970s sci-fi comic book art. So... It's difficult for me to really give any sort of historical evolution of these looks and styles. But this is really, really cool. I was looking at, um, he has a book called Memories. I have a European version of it that I got at Wildstorm because we were translating them. Pro probably the, the version that's called Memories, in fact. Um, mine is the European. What they would do is they would translate the European versions and then they would just basically dump the books, like the original versions of them, and, and they had an orphan box. And I would always grab them because I'm like, dude, I'll take this. You're done with this? You're going to throw it away? Mine. <laughs> so, needless to say, and, and <laughs> they knew that I liked them so much at one point, they would just basically, like I would be in the office where they did it and they would be like, there'd be a big stack of books on the floor. I'd be like, are you done with those? And they'd be like, yeah. And I'd be like, can I look through them? They're like, yeah, go ahead. We don't want them. We don't need them. Our job is done. So it was cool. You're like, damn you rich, you lucky son of a bitch. <laughs> Trust me. I paid my dues. I worked so hard at Wildstorm and for DC. DC, I don't know if DC owned us at that point. I can't remember. This is cool. I like it. It's 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 simple. The colors are actually really really nice. It, uh, you know, it's difficult for me to tell. I'm assuming this is traditional colors. It's like it's weird because again, when you see it on the computer, it can almost sometimes feel a little digital just because of the way that the file sort of processes. This is this, this. this is really nice. Love the blend of color right there. always amazing that's cool 
I do, you know, I had talked about this before. I do like Western stuff now. I didn't. Well, you know what, though? I will say this. When I first started collecting, I bought a huge run of the original Jonah Hex comic book. Because they had it in, like, the orphan, or not orphan box, like a dollar box at my comic book store. And there was a lot of them. And whenever I would see a lot of one title of a book, it was way more tempting. I bought the whole run of Thing, The Thing, if anyone's ever seen that comic. It's okay. I don't have them anymore. I sold them. but uh, Or threw them away. I don't remember which. <laughs> Uh, but <laughs> the Jonah Hex stuff actually was really cool. Like the 70s or whatever it was. It was I, I kind of like that book. But yeah, I, I wasn't a huge fan of like Western stuff. And then um, yeah, at some point it just kind of won me over. And I was like, you know, Westerns are kind of cool. Look, he's got a guitar. He's going to get his shred on. That's cool. Horsey, horsey. This is, yeah, you know, I, I like how straightforward this stuff is. I do. It's really interesting, because I was thinking about this when I was walking today. Tight, pristine, perfectly feathered lines versus more organic art. And what you'll find is, is artists draw longer and longer and have more expanded careers for whatever reason two things can potentially happen which is one they start to simplify and refine their stuff and two they will start to work rougher it's a weird thing and so i question myself and i go is that what's going on or do i just like this stuff better <laughs> i think it's a combination of both well no i don't actually i think it's it's more it's just my interests have changed you can always go back to the tight stuff. I just don't see the point anymore. It's like you kill yourself for 30 or 40 hours on a piece. And it's like, to me, ultimately, what you're going to judge the piece on is, is it a kick-ass piece of art or not? Does it does it look super badass when you look at it? Or do you really give a shit that like the feathering is all lined up like nicely? You know what I mean? There has to be a balance of it, meaning that like if you have enough lines that look weird and aren't cool looking then yeah you're gonna have a problem but it's like is it about neat or is it about the design of the piece is it about the level of intensity the dynamicness of it the contrast of it you know what i mean like it's like sitting and taking a brush and feathering lines so that they all have the same exact feather look is kind of i don't know i always felt that that stiffened up art in fact i'm not a big fan of that style of inking never really have been um so sometimes when, um, in the past, when that got real popular and people would have a very kind of like, uh, whatever you want to call it, like super, super dialed in thing, I, it wasn't exactly my thing. I, it can look good though. This, this is all nice. What's He had some really cool hats and jackets in the book I was looking at last night. This isn't this, the same style. Had a very kind of almost like Russian military sort of thing. Really thick fabric, big thick collars like this, and then yeah, really interesting like like headgear. It felt very like um, I guess dystopian. I don't know what you call it. Like like it was like. It felt like World War II, but then also in the future. It was kind of interesting. The future? The future. This is nice. Solid stuff. The book I was looking at last night was a little more exciting. I'm going to kind of hustle through these really quickly. I like how he draws this character. That's cool. He's got a very long like head, but he looks really cool. I'm about done. I want to get to work. Looking at art is fun, but drawing art is funner. <laughs> yes, it's cool. It's it's nice. I just I, there's a part of me that thinks that this color has been redone or something. 
I don't, I thought I saw the date on this is 1979. Is it dated here? We'll see when we get to the front of the book what the original publishing date was. This is nice. Man, that's cool. Yeah, this is really cool. Um, but yeah, the colors. I remember, though, that some of the humanoid stuff had been sort of col recolored. Some of the Janjatov stuff had, had been done like that. They gave it a little a little bit of a spit shine. So I'm wondering if this did too. <laughs> it's turning into a stoner comic. The Das the Dos Pastores Das Pastores, I think his book for humanoids is really, really good. Man. I was flipping through it. He can draw really small. Which actually is funny enough is in a digital book works well where when you would buy a graphic novel and you couldn't really zoom in. This isn't a great example because this guy doesn't draw as small and tight as Das Pastoris does at least right here. Um, but uh, yeah, I mean, at least with digital, you know, you can kind of pull in and really sort of check everything out. But he'll go crazy and do some stuff. I'll, eventually I'll do um, a super fun Sunday on him because he is, he is really, really good. I had seen his stuff the first time was at Wildstorm with the hardcover books. I don't remember what the original publisher was of the book. It was sort of like this um, kind of primitive. They were almost like Neanderthal, like men, but it had a little bit of almost like a Native American kind of vibe too. It was interesting. It was good though. But yeah, they were kind of like very early man, something like that. But I was like, holy shit, this guy can draw really good. This is cool. He really renders this stuff a lot. He's got this down. Cockroaches. That's cool. Nice page. Oh man, that's pretty neat. <laughs> what is he holding? Is it a cigarette? I guess it is. He's got a, like a fancy joint. This is really cool. This is a very cool page, actually. I saw people requesting Junji Ito a lot, so I will definitely do a Junji Ito thing. I've I've looked at his stuff multiple times and tried to figure out like a strategy for for a video for his stuff. So if you want to recommend a particular book that you think or story that he's done. Uh, let me know, cause when I when I skim around, sometimes I feel like uh, I I, I want to make sure it's entertaining for people that don't know his work. You know what I mean? I want to I want to really win people over. This is great, man. It's a really cool shot. Oh man, this is so cool. Love it. This is good too. Almost has a little bit of a Finch quality, huh? Just a little. Looks like one of Finch's sort of grumpy grumpy guys. <laughs> this is nice. Very funny lettering. I think it's the Mobius extermination capacity. Oh man, that's cool. Really, really neat. Excellent, excellent stuff. Okay, so this is Exterminator 17 Humanoids. Do we have a date when it was originally published? Oh my god. 2002. Okay. So maybe I'm wrong and it wasn't... Uh, our English language edition is 2002. So that's, I guess, that's when Wildstorm was translating this stuff for them. Yeah, I don't know what the original date that this came out was. So anyway, but alright. Have a great day. And uh, thanks for tuning in. I will talk to you guys tomorrow. Alright, bye.